Welcome to the third episode of the MPCNC series. In between the episodes, as I said, I did uh, belt routing, so all four belts are routed. I fixed the uh, bracket orientation of the router and now I completely mounted the router there as well. And I fixed the uh, lead screw, which means I cut it. So uh, everything is ready for uh, powering up in terms of the mechanical parts but we obviously do need some electronics and uh, for that there is no official mount uh, from uh, V1 Engineering so either I'm, I gotta find something on Thingiverse or design it myself but uh, yeah we'll see I'll probably design that and uh, in this episode in general we will work on the electronics we will fire this up test it and uh, we'll see from there I don't know for the electronics I have this uh, Meanwhile power supply LRS 15024. So I'm going to the 24 volt uh, setup. And for the controller, I'm using this SKR Mini E3 V2.0. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for the electronics. This isn't as complicated as a 3D printer in terms of electronics. We also have to mount the limit switches, they have finally arrived. I got these from China, they claim to be original Omron, no idea, but uh, at least they will work. They feel nice and all of them feel the same, so even if they are on the original, they are decent quality. So we gotta do that. And we also need to do cabling. Again, there is no official way of doing cable management as far as I can tell, so we'll also have to figure something out. But I'm guessing there is a mod for this, because I, mean, I, I doubt... Uh, Nobody thought about doing some cable management, so I'll look, in, look into that and uh, yeah, we'll see about that as well. But uh, we're starting with the electronics. I know I said I was going to work on the electronics. Well, actually I kind of did, but different part of the electronics. So the limit switches are now mounted. Obviously I have to do the wiring to them, so I'll remove them, but yeah, we can see that they fit at least. And of course my cat started meowing as soon as I started recording. Anyway, uh, I started printing drag chains. Now these are a mod. There is no official drag chain solution for the MPCNC, probably to cut some costs, but uh, yeah, I don't really like wires flying around everywhere and uh, unlike my 3D printers, uh, there is no good way to do umbilical cords either, so I need uh, a drag chain system, so I found this mod on Thingiverse, I'll link it in the description, and uh, yeah, it's just a printable drag chain. I printed these out of ABS, out of habit, and well, they seem to be fine, so I don't expect any problems. But uh, the problem uh, is with the design of the printed parts, there is no way to mount them to uh, any of these parts. I need in total five sets, I just have two and a half sets so far, but uh, yeah, the way you're supposed to do this is uh, screw one side to the table and the other side to the trucks. And uh, yeah, there's no place to screw that on the trucks, so I'll have to figure something else out for that. And uh, yeah, as I said, one per truck, because every truck has a stepper motor and a limit switch. But uh, there is also a bonus, another one. I need one of the trucks. I'm thinking this one, because... Uh, this is semi out of the way, but it's also not hard to reach like this one So I'm taking this one from this to the center core because I have to run the power uh, cable for the uh, Spindle as well. So well browser not spindle anyway uh, Yeah, so in total I need five sets. I'll have to figure something else out with that 
But uh, yeah, that's definitely something I have to work on. Plus the actual electronic mounting as well, which uh, I've changed my mind since the last part. Uh, I don't think I'm going to 3D print something. I'm thinking I just uh, will use an aluminium plate or something and uh, mount it hanging from here, maybe support it on the side and uh, yeah, mount everything to the aluminium plate. Or probably on this side actually since it's uh, less visible. I also decided to use a Raspberry Pi with this just for uh, octoprint but uh, I don't know uh, the firmware they use for MPCNC just like most 3D printers is Marlin. Uh, with being a Voron user I'm used to Clipper and uh, I don't want to give that up so maybe I'll do Clipper so yeah, if that if I do that, I will definitely need it. Otherwise, I'll need it only for Octoprint. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely need a Raspberry Pi as well. So okay, another piece of electronics just got added. And uh, lastly, you probably noticed it already. I finally mounted the shelf as well. Uh, I didn't do it initially because of my back pain, but uh, now I'm feeling better, so I thought I'd do that. So uh, yeah, there is a shelf there. It's more than just a shelf. It's needed. So this. Uh, tables doesn't wobble as much it supports the legs so uh, yeah it is actually a structural part and it's installed as well well this is my fault I just noticed it I don't know why I didn't check but uh, yeah you can see that this uh, track chain was for an earlier version of the MPCNC so uh, yeah that's why there is no way to mount this I'll still figure something out. So this is the third revision of the design. In between I had a similar design as well, but the this side was as wide as the bottom and that interfered with the limit switches. So I'm assuming this one will work, but uh, I guess let's print and then see. So there we go, I finally figured out the uh, drag chains. So you can see that it's mounted on the table here and on this side. As I explained, I uh, replaced the bolts that are holding the idlers here with longer ones and then I'll well, just screw the piece in there. And boom, it is working just fine. It is a pretty painful process to do this, so uh, I'd recommend doing this when assembling if you're uh, going to use my mount. And yeah, I'm going to release it. There is one minor adjustment that I'm going to make. Uh, you can see that I mounted the drag chain flush to the table. The side of it is what I mean. But uh, you can see that it's starting to stick out. And that's because this is uh, slightly more outwards than the table. And that at least that's the case when you mount the legs of the MPCNC flush to the end of the table. So uh, I'm just going to adjust it slightly where it's uh, offset a little more inside and, and that's about it. And I'm going to release the files in the description below, which will probably be up uploaded to Thingiverse, but we'll see. So uh, yeah, if you want to add drag chains to your uh, MPCMC, you can just uh, use this drag chain. I'm also going to link that and then just use my mount. So. Uh, yeah, now that this is figured out, I'm going to do the rest and then move on to the drag chain for the uh, between the truck to the core. So yeah, that, I still have to figure that one out as well. But since I figured this out, I assume it's not going to be a big deal. But we'll see. Okay, I'm really getting frustrated at this point, but uh, let me show you why. The MPCNC specs uh, one length of M. M5 screw for every inch, and if, if the needed screw length is shorter, it just sticks out. That's their idea. It's just to shorten the bomb list and uh, save on costs. But the uh, problem is, it barely fits here, and then uh, you use these nylon nuts to hold them in place, which they're already pretty hard to uh, screw in and unscrew, as you probably know. And then on top of that, uh, they're held in place by hex cutouts in the design, but uh, they don't cover the entire uh, outer rim of the nut, so uh, it's easy to uh, 
just deform, especially because they recommend these to be printed out of PLA. And because of the, again, the angle shape, they're impossible to get a wrench or a pair of pliers, or even needle nose ones or, you know, anything in there to hold the nut in place. So, uh, yeah, it, it has been ridiculously frustrating trying to replace these screws so far. And I'm not exaggerating, I uh, spent at least, if you combine the hours, uh, four or five hours to just to replace uh, two, four, five screws. And that was spread across multiple days because I got really frustrated. So uh, yeah, when if the video is late, well actually I should say when the video is late, it's already pretty late now. Well, that's one of the reasons. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. The, Design is really not, uh, uh, I don't know what the correct, uh, best word to describe it would be, but it's not easy to work with. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I think I have uh, three more screws to replace. So uh, yeah, I'll have to get to that at some point, but not today. So uh, yeah, I've, I already explained this, but I'm just replacing them with longer ones like this. That's why the one next to it is longer. So, uh, yeah, that's part of the reason why the video is late. Part of the reason is the uh, coming up with the direct chain idea and the mounts in the first place. And then we'll have to do the electronics, etc. So I know I predicted a week or two. This will probably end up being a month, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, I really don't like many aspects of this design. I just, uh, I'm just too frustrated at this point. So yeah, I better shut up. It's been two, uh, two more days. I spent about two more hours on this. Still couldn't manage to remove one single fucking screw. So, you know what? I'm taking a break from the drag chains. And sorry, it won't be complete in this episode. I just can't do this right now. I need to take a break. I'll come back to this, I promise. It will be done between this episode and the next episode. I can't tell you that much, but uh, yeah, I definitely need a break from that. But uh, of course there's something else I wanted to do in this video, so here it is, this is uh, the mount I'm planning to use for the electronics. As I said, I was planning on cutting a random piece of aluminium, but well, it turns out this is the original rear panel I cut for the Voron Zero. So that's why it has these double-sided tapes, for example, I'll definitely remove those. But uh, yeah, this is, I think, the perfect size for this. All I have to fit on there is a Raspberry Pi, the power supply, the control board, and this uh, LM2596 buck converter. I think they should all fit there. And uh, yeah, why not, why not reuse something instead of cutting a new piece of aluminium? Plus, it has the benefit of actually having a mount for the power input, which is also nice. So uh, yeah, I'll just quickly mount all of the electronics there using standoffs, so I'll have to plan where to drill, drill, mount them. So I think this is going to be the layout. Power from here will come to the power supply. And I will also use one of these uh, previous holes to uh, earth the plate as well, just in case. From here it will run to the SKR and this buck converter. Uh, previous buck converters from the same manufacturer I received had a heatsink for the LM2596. This doesn't in the in the anti-static bag, so I'll add one there just in case. And here is going to be the Raspberry Pi. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you're all asking why is this a, uh, diagonal? Well, I made this mistake so many times that I'm now used to this. Uh, I need a way of routing the USB cable. They stick out quite a bit, and if I place it like this well there is a good chance there won't be enough clearance to the SKR for the USB cable routing that's why I place it diagonally like this so it can have room to stick out and then I'll coil it under the Raspberry Pi standoffs probably and just plug it to the SKR so uh, yeah as I said this plate is uh, more than large enough for this job so I guess let's get to drilling and then mounting these. So here it is, all of the electronics mounted to the aluminium plate. Next step is to mount this to the table. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do this, but 
my idea right now is to uh, mount it like this here this is the best I can hold it one handed but uh, I hope you get the idea and uh, to do that mount I'm thinking of 3D printing some stuff so this is 3mm thick so I can easily hold this in place with uh, just a 3D printed piece so uh, what I'm thinking is coming up with a solution that uh, holds the 3mm plate in place and it's toolless so it is easily removable somehow maybe like a clip on this side or something uh, I'm not 100% sure right now but uh, yeah I want to do something like that so yeah I guess let's work on that and then uh, we'll see how that turns out so here is the solution I came up with as you can see it is a four piece design this is two pieces that's why it's four so one two three four it is a toolless design it relies on this uh, plastic uh, I guess that's still technically a spring so it compresses the plate in place and it's not it doesn't move as I said it's toolless so it's pretty easy to uh, place it there and then remove it but it does require two hands so give me a second and and here it is nice and secured in place you can see that it doesn't wobble much this is a pretty tight mount in fact it's a little tighter than ideal it's not the easiest thing to remove but I guess that's also a plus since uh, that I don't think this will come out on its own even with the machine running so uh, yeah, you can see that the electronics mount is uh, working just as intended. So, uh, yeah, I know I couldn't do as much as I planned to do in this episode, but well, it's, it's going to be it for this episode. I'm not going to give a date for the next episode, but uh, yeah, I'll get it done as soon as I can. I just need to take a break from the uh, screws here. And uh, I didn't mention, but of course I could go medieval on this, but then the problem is I'd have to reprint those parts and more importantly I'd have to reassemble this thing. That's what I'm trying to avoid, but well, uh, yeah, even that might be easier at this point. I don't know. I'll, I'll, we'll see. But uh, I'll definitely take a few week, a few days off from this, maybe even a week. But uh, yeah, after that I'll come back to this and do as much as I can and yeah, after that you'll see the next episode of the series. But uh, yeah, for now that's it, so I still hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned for the next episode. That's it, so thanks for watching.